Hey, hello, everybody. This is Birch, uh, bringing you guys a first-person gameplay commentary. This is going to be a Legion Commander game. Uh, sorry about the audio quality. Um, I am apologetic that it sucks, but unfortunately, this is what's going to happen. Uh, if you guys are not up to date on where I am in the world, I am currently in Wisconsin. I'm at my parents' house for winter break or Christmas or whatever. Christmas is like in a couple days or something. So here I am to hang out with my family. I haven't seen them in like six months. So I'm I'm sorry that the audio quality sucks. But I'm using actually my laptop microphone, which is really bad quality. Apparently, the audio jack on my laptop is broken. Like, I can't plug my headset into it. So, unfortunately, I can't actually even use a headset mic. So, you're going to hear a lot of, like, me moving sounds, and I apologize for that. But that's just what's going to happen because uh, my computer's broken, partially. And I didn't realize that before I left. So, sorry about that. I, I apologize. Okay, anyways, first things first. Um, I've played about three Legion Commander games so far. Uh, and I, I don't completely know the ins and outs of the heroes, but I have a lot of observations that I'm sure I can make and talk about um, as you guys go into the future and play this hero. So, um, She's actually good at a lot of different laning setups. Uh, the first game I played her, I did a dual offlane against a Phantom Lancer, I think. And um, the second game I played her, I did a jungle, and third game was a jungle also. The second game didn't really matter because it was like hella stomp, so I didn't really get to play the hero much, but I feel like I learned enough from the first game and the third game that I feel uh, educated enough to tell you about the hero. So, you can dual offlane her. Um, hypothetically, you could just solo offlane her, but I don't think that's really a good thing. Um, it'd be better if it was versus just two heroes instead of three, but if you're against, like, three heroes, she's not a good offlane hero. So, preferably, I think you would have at least, like, a couple heroes that uh, you're up against, um, and I think that would be the best matchup, so... Oh yeah, by the way, uh, the reason I'm not using webcam, in case you guys are curious, uh, the webcam works, but the light, the room light, is behind me, and it makes my face look really dark, so you can't even, like, see my face, so I just thought I would just turn it off, but, um, maybe in some of the other videos I'll find a better spot, uh, that way you guys can see where I'm at. I'm actually in, a, an old bedroom of mine, one of the ones I grew up in, and I've played a lot of Dota in this room, actually, like, when I got back from college, I sat in the same spot as I'm sitting here right now, and I played Dota for, like, seven months or something crazy. I took a break for StarCraft 2, it was right when StarCraft 2 came out. If you guys need a time reference, but... Alright, anyways, um, I'm playing Legion of Manor as a jungler this game. I don't think she has to jungle, but she's actually very, very good at jungling. I was a little surprised. People were like, oh yeah, she's really good at jungling. And I was like, eh, how good she can, can she be? And that actually jungled her a little bit. And I was like, wow, she actually farms really fast. Um, and the reason that she does is, uh, let me explain her skills really quick. That's better. The most unique of, the, of her skills is her third skill. It's a passive, kind of similar to Axe's spin. When attacked, she has a chance to immediately attack again with bonus lifesteal. Now, keep in mind, this does not do, like... This doesn't work like Centaur's Return. Centaur's Return damages whoever attacks him, no matter the range. Moment of Courage, in a way, it just gives you, like, uber attack speed for a second for whoever you're attacking, and it gives you lifesteal on those hits. So, for example, if uh, I'm not right-clicking anybody, and Moment of Courage is proc'd, it doesn't do anything. I have to be actively right-clicking somebody for the attack speed and the lifesteal to work out, so... If you're not actually right-clicking somebody, if you're just walking around during that time period, then you're actually missing out. So, the way it works is you go into the jungle, you get auto-attacked by creeps, and the creeps proc your moment of courage, and then you lifesteal from them and get a free hit in. This is why Quelling Blade is really useful. Because you actually increase your right-click damage, and you increase your moment of courage damage. Uh, you don't want to start off on Ursus, that's not healthy at all here, so I'm going to start off against some, some wolves here. So as you guys can see, I'm going to proc the uh, moment of courage every once in a while, and in the meantime, I'm just going to look around. Um, there's ac It's actually important you don't attack move when you're jungling, so uh, other times that I'm jungling, I usually attack and I move, and I attack and I move. But I really don't want to do that when I'm playing Legion Commander, because some of the times that you're moving, you're going to proc the attack thing, and then you won't actually attack because you'll be moving instead. So there's a lot of right-clicking and auto-attacking that you do when you play Legion Commander in the jungle. Um, the other starting item builds are, should be fairly <clears throat> understandable. Again, you get the Quelling Blade to increase your right-click damage, which also benefits from you getting lifesteal. So by having a Quelling Blade, you lifesteal more and you do more damage. So it works out pretty nicely. You get a Stout Shield, of course, because you're jungling, and that's going to give you damage block against the weak creatures. And a tank goes well to keep your regen up. <clears throat> Sorry about all the coughing and stuff. <clears throat> Alright, I think I've managed it. Okay. So that's her third skill. It scales up in chance as well as lifesteal percentage and ends up being a really useful thing. I think this is when I DC'd, actually. Uh, one of the other problems with my uh, laptop setup right now... Yeah, I'm just gonna, like, hardcore AFK and you're gonna be confused about what's going on. I basically DC'd about 15 seconds before that. Uh, but basically, the uh, Ethernet cable that plugs into its computer doesn't have that little latchy thing. So while I was playing, it got bumped out, and then my computer went to wireless instead of wired, 
and then it kicked me out of the game, and then I would reconnect like this really fast. I did this like three times during the game. Um, luckily, this game, it didn't result in me dying, or it wasn't during crucial moments or anything, but that stuff is scary. Anyways, uh, her second skill is really cool. It's kind of similar to Abaddon's, uh, yeah, Abaddon's, um, shield. Instead of uh, giving damage block and an explosion, it gives you attack speed and HP regen per second. It does remove negative debuffs, though, so you can stop people that are getting stunned or people that have slows on them or things like that. So it's a pretty good skill. I like getting it at level 2 when I jungle because it helps make up for the fact that I might be missing a lot of HP. So early on, it'll co only cost 80 mana, so if I really need to clear a nasty camp, I can give myself bonus, bonus HP regen, and it gives you 5 seconds of 30 per second which is a total of 150 HP, which is actually really good for the mana cost, while also increasing your damage output. So while you're jungling, if you have just about full mana, just cast Moment of Courage occasionally, or press the attack, sorry, and you should be able to get a kill. Now in terms of Moment of Courage, I like to get two early levels for jungling. Some people argue that you should get more for jungling, but I'm really not a huge fan of that idea. And the reason is because the ability doesn't really scale that effectively as you level up, um, or at least in the early levels. It's it's not that great. It's kind of it's worse than X not getting. It's worse than X getting spins. X has some purpose, but this only works if you're right clicking somebody. Like if there's a five v five team fight or something, you have all your points in a moment of courage. It doesn't matter. It's not going to do anything. Sure, you're going to life steal eighty percent, but your damage isn't that high anyway. So putting a ton of points in a moment of courage, I think, is a mistake in the early in the early game. So that's the second skill. Anyways, uh, the attack speed goes up by quite a bit. The HP regen goes up. I, I'm a little unsure whether to max is second um, or third. I kind of do a mix depending on what I wanted to do, at least in this game. I haven't consulted with any pro players about this information, by the way, so this is all my opinion. So if you're confused and disagree or saw somebody else do something different, it's because I haven't looked at how anybody else plays this hero. I just played her like three times and I just guesstimated some stuff. I'm going to stack this camp now. The reason is because I have two levels of Moment of Courage, so I'm doubling my life seal. The percent to, to hit is a bit higher. And I should be able to... Um, utilize extra units to attack me faster. And this is something I maybe should have done in some of the other camps, is stack it up so that there's more things hitting me. Very Again, similar to Axe. But you have to be very careful. So I'm going to give myself some attack speed bonus here and get a right-click. And with all these extra things hitting me, I'm actually um, life-stealing a lot. And sometimes you do get to attack twice, by the way, if you didn't notice. You do get to attack twice sometimes with Moment of Courage. So I'm getting about 50 HP. Now, since I'm not going to be able to finish that off, I'm going to go to some easier camps instead. I'm going to cast the heal on me myself once again. And as I jump these I'll be life stealing back up and this is gonna be nice for me so this will get me back to a, a decent HP regen place and maybe I can go back to the large camp all right now we can talk about my first skill this skill is very interesting and it's actually very gonna be very useful this game because it uh oh, well I'll explain it first of all it's a ranged nuke it does damage and I believe it, it says it does damage per unit I don't know exactly how this works but I think the way it works is if there's I, I really don't know. I don't want to misinform you guys, um, but it's a little misleading. If I hold alt, does it tell me anything cool? It doesn't. I think it might do more damage if you have more units, because it says damage per unit, and the damage the nuke is actually really low at 200, so I think it does more if there's more units there. I'm not completely sure about that, so don't quote me, but it's not that important of a, of a factor. So I stack this again, by the way. So it does a nuke, but most importantly, it gives you bonus movement speed. I don't think that gives you attack speed. Uh, I think, yeah, just bonus movement speed is what it gives me. So it's basically used to close the gap or to chase, essentially. So I'm going to be able to kill the big dude over here. And I'm going to have to pull this back. Basically, whenever the creeps get a little overwhelming, I'm just going to pull it back. That way it does a bit more burst of attacking rather than a sustain kind of thing. But I really like maxing this first. I don't max it by 7 because I like two levels of the moment of courage. Two levels of moment of courage. But maxing this by... At least eight, I think, is a really good strategy to do because if, again, if you just have this skill and this skill, you basically turn into a right-clicking machine, and that's not very good for early team fights at all. And in fact, it's really bad. So I'll do a two-one-two item build right now because I want to get this maxed out relatively fast. And uh, later, I can use this for a ganking, or I can cast it on my opponents so I can close the distance. Uh, to my opponents a bit faster. So that's basically how it ends up working. Um, it also does bonus illusion damage, by the way. So this means that uh, it says it does 25% illusion damage, which I believe means that whatever... I'm not sure exactly what it means, but basically it one-shots illusions in the early game. One-shots, not even kidding. 
Um, it's very, very good against illusions. Even in the mid game, I was killing all of Peel's illusions with one blast of this. And it sounds amazing, but the problem is that the cooldown is actually really high at 18 seconds. So it's not very good. Just You can't really spam it. You have to be really careful when you use it against Peel. Ideally, you use it when the illusions get overwhelmed or when Peel uses his manta and you can break all of his manta illusions. But it's not always that easy because it's hard to tell which one's the real Peel. Uh, we had a bit of problem with detection in this game, so I have a feeling that if we actually had a gem or something like that, it'd be way easier to uh, identify the PL and uh, make decisions with it. But even still, it's very good for that purpose, and you can also just use it as a generic nuke. I think Invoker made a huge mistake here. He said, oh, I'm just going to go jungle um, because the DP is spamming out lanes, but then the mid tower just got taken for free. Um, I was actually very annoyed about this because I think it was a huge mistake. Like, okay, Invoker couldn't have necessarily defended that, but there's there's definitely a good chance that he could have pulled the creep wave pass and saved it 200 HP or maybe forced a TP or something. I don't know. But basically, DP got the tower immediately. It's a seven minute tower, which is ridiculous. It was a mid tower as well. I mean, that's what Death Prophet does. But I was like, it's like really you're gonna go jungle on some hard camps rather than just city mid and last city. It didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But he did it, and we lost our tower, and that sucks. So. Okay, so I talked about Moment of Courage, you kind of save it to initiate to get movement speed. Let's talk about the uh, arguably most interesting thing that Legion Commander has, and that's her ulti. Um, her ulti is really useful on paper, and also very good in the late game, uh, as it draws on. But it's called Duel. For 4 seconds at level uh, the first level, and for 50 mana, you can basically force your opponent to attack you. It's very similar to Axe's uh, Battle Hunger, or Battle Call, what's it called? Berserker's Call, or whatever. It basically forces people to attack you, and it forces you to attack them for the time duration. During the time duration, neither you or your ally can use spells or abilities, and if either one of you dies during the duration, the winner gets a permanent damage bonus for the rest of the game. Permanent damage bonus. If both of you survive the duel, if neither one of you dies, during the, the time duration, then nobody gets the damage bonus. If the duration ends and somebody dies right after, it doesn't matter. No one gets the damage bonus. So that's what the ulti does. It's a huge duration, and ideally what you do is you cast Overwhelming Odds to close into melee range, you cast Press the Attack on yourself, and then you cast Duel. And while they're forced to attack you, there's a chance they'll proc Moment of Courage, so you lifesteal from them, and ideally you'll get an advantage in the right-click at war. So um, that's basically what you use Duel for. Uh, the most typical build that people have been talking about, in my, from my perspective that I've seen at least, is a fast blink taker build. And the reason is because it allows you to blink and duel, and, and basically you're essentially ganking, and forces your opponent into a 4 second stun, and if you kill them, they die, and you get a damage bonus. And so hopefully, you can do this a couple times until you're able to snowball and have a bunch of damage, and then all things are going to be very, very nice. As you can see, both of these creep camps are pretty bad. Uh, in terms of doing damage to heroes. Um, the troll camp as well as the wildkin one are not super high damage, and the wildkin is a little scary, but not the other one. And this is one of the problems with the jungling legion commander, is that you go into the jungle, and you basically don't leave until 10 minutes. If I was playing a bat rider, bat riders can get a blink dagger by far before this, and I might not be doing this the most efficient way or something like that, but as far as I'm aware, I think um, I'm doing it about appropriately. Uh, you could probably skip from getting the bottle, you'd have to go back to base instead, and then you'd have a Blink Dagger 650 gold earlier. But I kind of like the bottle because it keeps you a little safer, keeps your HP up, gives you mana that you can use, and I bet as a whole it actually makes you jungle a bit faster. Um, I mean, it, get, it increases your GPM, it doesn't get your Blink Dagger as fast, which is uh, possibly a problem, so you got to keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, Fast Blink Dagger is the idea. Um, her strength gain is actually pretty solid at 2.6. Her agility gain is pretty bad at 1.7, and her int gain is pretty good at 2.2. So with this, I I'm going to go over here and see if I can help out the Tuskar. So I really want to make sure that uh, his death isn't for nothing in case he does end up dying. She looks like he's going to end up dying, so... So I'm going to cast that so I get a movement speed bonus. And that worked out. So I was able to ulti him. Uh, we won the duel because we killed him immediately afterwards. And I basically just did that to propel my snowball. I wanted to get some damage bonus. I wanted to guarantee a kill. And I wanted to uh, get some slight advantage. So I now have a 10 damage bonus from duels. Because that was my first one to the duel. Uh, cooldown is 50 seconds. So I've got quite a bit until my next one. And uh, yeah, overwhelming odds is not low enough. So... Radiance middle tower Almost level 4 in that. And I should be able to finish my Blink Dagger over here. Possibly, if I don't take too much harass. It's considering initiating on that guy, but he's actually very, very rapid. 
very, very fast it is. So for now, I can just finish up uh, items in the jungle. I was hoping DP would stay around so I could wait six seconds and we could duel her and kill her, but she actually did back Radiant's up to the tower, so tower instead I'm going to go consider buying my Blink Dagger, and I'll steal some last hits over here. And there we go, there's a Blink Dagger. So now we're hoping DP will come up, I can Blink in and duel her, and then my allies will jump up and kill her. Would be ideal. I could have maybe gone right there, and I think I was planning to, but then she just nuked the wave and it just kind of died. And my mistake here is that I actually showed that I did have a Blink Dagger. I maybe should have uh, allowed that uh, moment of surprise, because I probably could have gotten a bit of an easier kill out of it if I had waited. So, Arrow's going to come in. Looks like we are going to get the Veno. I should have used my uh, first skill on him right there. Luckily for me, I do kill him before I die. So I do get 10 damage out of that, but I did die. Not very good. Death Prophet's gonna get a kill. We definitely overdive there. Two deaths for one isn't worth it, even though I got 10 bonus damage for it. 10 bonus damage is actually quite a bit of gold if you think about it. A Blades of Attack is 9 damage and it costs 450 gold. So in a way, you could look at it as, a, as an advantage. But um, as you'll find out later, Legion Commander doesn't scale the best for a hard carry. She's really not a hard carry. She's more of like a utility semi-carry. It's probably the best way I could describe it. And we'll talk about that more as my decisions continue. But anyways, I got 20 damage now. I definitely should use Overwhelming Odds. If I would have used Overwhelming Odds before I jumped on her, or on Venno, there's a really good chance that I would have been able to run away or stay alive a bit longer, because I could have ran out of the battle or something like that. So, I was really hoping for a TP. I was asking for a TP here. I was just like, TP, 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 anyone TP. I dueled him here, and the attempt that he would uh, stop rolling... There's some really buggy things with it, but whatever. We got the kill. I didn't get the duel bonus, but that's a dead hero, and it's going to be okay. So I'm going to start chasing now. I used overwhelming odds. Luckily for us, the chain frost didn't go off. And now I decided to get a couple extra levels of the Moment of Courage. I think the last time I played, I actually maxed out Press the Attack at this point, rather than finishing Moment of Courage. But um, I'm not entirely sure what the best item build is, just or the best skill build is just yet. I have decent damage at this point because I've gotten two dual kills, but I, I'm just not so sure that... I, I just don't know which one to max out yet, honestly. The mana cost is very low here, the, the duration will go up and all that good stuff, but... Decided to chase the Veno. I'm gonna use the duel on him, I was hoping to get a bunch of procs. He attacked me a total of three times there, and I didn't get any Moment of Courages, which actually makes sense. Uh, it's about for, for every five attacks on you, you'll proc a Moment of Courage, so... Using my ulti there was actually not worth it. Not worth it at all. Wasn't able to get a kill, none of my allies were nearby, and I was kind of like, okay, well, that accomplished very nothing. Uh, very little, that is, so. Definitely best to use that when there's creeps around or something like that, so. Or allies, most importantly allies. So, no big loss, though. The cooldown is very low, so I use the duel, he gets scared, and uh, it's all going to be okay. So, build that I'm going to go next, or the next item that I want to pick up is going to be power treads. The reason I want to grab power treads is because I want extra HP and I want attack speed. Now, when I did a dual lane, uh, the first game I played Legion Commander did a dual lane and I went for a phase instead of Treads because I wanted a bit more initiation. In that game, I actually didn't get a Blink Dagger, so I think if you skip the Blink Dagger build, you should go phase, very likely, for the attack speed. We lost Wolfman. By the way, if you guys didn't notice, uh, we didn't have a Courier or Observer Wards this game. Nobody has been playing support, so that was a bit of a frustrating thing. And I'm asking my allies to come defend. Nobody showed up, though, so this is pretty cool. Dyer's structures are fortified. I almost dueled him, and I tried really hard, but I'm not going to get it. Luckily, I was able to get him with overwhelming odds. Not even a contest. If I'm worried about the disable, I can uh, pop my second skill, and that does remove the slow. Dyer's and I'll probably want to burst up my mana a bit here. It's very obviously a fake. I tried to deny that, but I didn't get it, unfortunately. Oh, they actually had a sentry here. I, re I was really mad that the Tuskar killed him, that was really stupid. He should have let me duel him, like the guy was gonna die, and they killed him a little too fast. If I could have dueled him, that would have been a guaranteed 10 damage. Actually, I would have gotten 14 damage out of that, because I had a level 2 moment of courage here. So, I was pretty frustrated. I was like, why can't you just wait a quarter of a second so I can duel that guy? But, he didn't do it. It's kind of like track, basically. A except track would give him gold, but, I mean, that's 14 damage, that could make an impact. You never really know. So, I was pretty sad that I wasn't able to use it, but... 
Oh well. Now we're going to look for some kills in the jungle. Those are obviously illusions. There is actually already a Diffusal Blade on the Phantom Lancer, so we have to be pretty careful. I actually wanted him to go back aggressive. I was pretty upset that he retreated so fast, but Wolfman backed off, and we, we're not going to be able to get that dual kill. So it's kind of hoping to dive somebody. I'm really strong right now. My HP is really high. I've got some bonus damage. I've got a level 2 duel, and I have a Blink Dagger. So we just kind of need to see your hero, and then I should be able to Blink Initiate, and we should be able to kill them. So just spotted the Death Prophet, so I'm going to Blink in blind here. Unfortunately... She was running away, and I'm not going to be able to get her. I was really sad about that, too. If I could have dueled her, very likely she would have died 100%. Still considering about going in, but it looks like there's a lot more heroes here. And I've got an Iron Shell on me, very importantly, so I do a lot of damage. I get a kill here. And I want to remove any slows on me so I can chase. It doesn't quite look like I'm going to be able to get that kill. Mostly, mostly because the moment of courage cooldown is so long. 18 seconds is so big. I think this hero is actually pretty good. Um, despite all the complaining that I'm having about moment of courage, I think I think she is a pretty strong hero. I was guessing that that was the real PL. I kind of wanted to uh, push a bit here. We actually have decent team fight at this point. We have to be a little careful about the Lich ulti, but other than that, I think it's it's not bad. I'm going to finish my treads now, get a TP scroll. Now if I need to cast, I'm just going to tread switch. Unfortunately for me, the rune was actually top instead of bottom, so Dyer's I wasn't going to be able to refill my bottle, but attack. my right-click damage is actually really solid now. And that's another reason that's Radiant really nice to get treads tower. instead of phase, is that the attack speed really compensates, or really benefits well uh, from the bonus damage tower. you get from your ulti, so... Attack. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. So where do I go for now? Um, for, for my next item build at least. That uh, might be a bit of a question that you guys are having. And the answer is, it really depends. Like, it really, really depends, guys. Um, in most cases, I think the first game I played, I went phase Basilius Wand into a Vanguard, and after the Vanguard, I made a Daedalus immediately, because somebody had already made a Desolator. And it actually worked really good. My crits, I ended up getting Lifesteal for my crits, um, and then I ended up getting a lot of potential for healing really quickly, or very rapidly, because of the crit. Because you can crit on your uh, attack back things, you can crit on those, and Desolator applies, and orbs apply, and all these fun things. So, it actually works pretty good, but this game I ended up uh, saving up and going for a Desolator. And that's because it gives me really, really good 1v1 kill power, which is basically like a way of saying, like, I want to be able to duel one guy, and pick him off, and kill him and kill him very rapidly. And Desolator is definitely an item that lets you do that. Um, I'm not, I didn't quite feel as good about it after I played this game, uh, but that was maybe a bit of weird circumstances. So we can actually kill Roche really faster, especially with the alacrity damage bonus that I'm getting when I end up hitting back. I'm getting about 100 HP lifesteal, which is huge. And we will kill him. It looked like he actually didn't want it, so at this point I decided to sell my Stout Shield to pick up the Aegis. The reason I kept the Stout is because, or the uh, Quelling, excuse me, is because um, I figured it's pretty good for jungling, and I didn't really need the damage block too badly at this point. Um, Legion Commander's agility gain, like I pointed out before, is actually not very good, um, and that means that she actually peaks off really hard in terms of mid game, in terms of physical tankiness. And that's one of the problems. Well, I think a damage item first is definitely needed. Uh, you'll grab a damage item first, but afterwards I'm starting to feel like you really just need to grab a tanky item. Um, and it's it's difficult to make that decision, basically. It depends on the lineup. Uh, my opponents actually have arguably the perfect heroes for me to fight against, uh, with the exception of their silences. Um, most games that I played him, uh, played Legion Commander so far, played her that is, I ended up going for a BKB so that I could have uh, a protection against stuns and silences. Uh, but I kind of feel like it was a mistake this game. The silences are annoying by all means, but top tower I think I needed to grab an armor item instead of magic immunity. Uh, because magic immunity, like if they don't have a lot of stuns, I don't you don't completely need magic immunity. I kind of felt like that's all. So I got a free tower there, I was pretty happy about that. Pretty sweet. Skills are almost maxed out. My teammates are walking right next to each other, which is really smart. And there's no point for me to go to this. Like, I could TP to the tier 2, but by the time I would get there, I don't really think that I'd be able to accomplish anything. So, um, I just thought I would continue pushing, I would continue getting last hits, and we're going to lose some advantage here. 
really high skilled Podwin decided to call GG at this point, which is really fun. It's a really nice time. So I give myself some attack speed bonus so I can take the tower out. I'm also tanking it a bit here. It's gonna be a Veno. So definitely considering going on this, so I said give me Iron Show, give me Surge. I was like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, Iron Shell. Iron Shell helps a lot for this. If you're ever a melee hero, guys, like, just having the extra, uh, the extra attack speed is really useful. So I just gave myself some attack speed. My blink felt very slow there. Uh, two of my mouse how keys aren't working, by the way, which is why you'll see me click TB scrolls a lot. There's no reason for Wolfman to stay. He should have ditched me, and he did not, so he died. Could have been a 1 Oh, We apparently lost Invoker during that. I'm not sure where, but he died. So basically, their team has two really weak players the Venomancer and the, El uh, the Elder Titan? No, uh, Earth Spirit. Uh, those two guys. Pretty weak. We still don't really have a whole lot of support items. Um, I believe Darkseer has been buying all of the Courier and the Flying and the Observer Wards and stuff, so... If he ends up feeding a lot, it's at least partially because he did have to sink a lot of his income into trying to help us carry. So at this point, I decided to hop back into the jungle and say I'm just going to jungle until I'm able to get Desolator up. Again, one of the problems with Legion Commander is that you spend way too much time in the early game in the jungle because you're just trying to get items up so you can start contributing. Which is one of the reasons that I, I don't think Jungle Le Legion Commander is legitimate um, outside of pubs. If you're playing a serious game, I do not think you should jungle this hero because it takes way too long to get a Blink Dagger. And when you do get a Blink Dagger, sure, you can do some really nice ganks, but it's not on the level of a Bat Rider gank. Like, Duel is useful, but you can do damage. Uh, reliable damage will still position yourself in case bad things happen. Blink Dagger kind of has to force your opponents to be more alone as you jump on them, and it's just not the same amount of usefulness, basically. So, I just don't think you should jungle her. This is another case where I kind of just sit in the jungle for a long time. I have my Desolator finished, though. I have a lot of plus damage I'm hitting for a, more or less a double damage for a regular hero. And I also have minus 7 armor whenever I attack opponents. So, this ends up being really useful uh, for solo kill power. I'm going to spot out all these illusion things. I don't really think any of them real, but as you guys can see, I can one-shot them still. Lots of good damage there. My armor is really low here, it's at 6. The only major physical damage I have to deal with on my team is Death Prophet. I was so ready to go on that, but I could tell that he invis, so we were going to come gank him here. It looks like he's actually TPing out. Yeah, he TPed to the bot lane, but I felt really bad about this. Wow, he actually almost got vacuumed, that was quite close. I, I almost think I should have gone in early so that I could disable him for 4 seconds and my teammates would have had to catch up or something, but... Um, unfortunately it didn't work out, so we were unable to kill him there. If we would have gotten that kill, that would have been really big, because uh, their PL actually hasn't died yet. I haven't looked at that many stats, sorry about this, guys. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm on a laptop at my parents' house, so things are a little weird right now, but all my settings are a bit unusual. The audio is probably going to be different than what you guys were expecting, but... Gonna duel him up here, got a kill. I was Gailed and ulti and wow, look at that, my really fancy second skill removes both of them. It's really nice. And I'm gonna steal the kill. Because I think my hero is more important than both Invoker and the bottom, personally. So yeah, use your second skill. If you're against a Venomancer, just laugh at him. Because all he's ever going to do is Poison Sting you. That's all he did. He ultied for me, and he Gailed for me. And I just immediately removed them with my second skill. It's really, really strong. Um, and it's one of the cool things about Legion Commander, is that her role is very, very fluid and very unusual. It's very different than most heroes. It's not like I'm playing a hard support like Abaddon. I'm playing like an initiating, disabling, semi-carry that can also support a little bit. And that's, it's really fun to play her for that reason, that you can do a lot of different stuff. So it's it's not like you're just playing hard carry or support or whatever. So, wow, I got really lucky on that crit. I didn't, I didn't realize that that happened, but that was really, really lucky, I must say. I have to be pretty careful here, because I'm about to die. Luckily I am invisible though, and I'm going to be able to blink out and luckily survive. I really don't want to die there. Death Prophet kills Invoker, they're going to clean up on actually a lot of us, so. So I'm going to buy a Ogre Club, 
And I'm going to go towards a Black King Bar at this point because I wanted to have magic immunity against a lot of the magic damage that I was taking. I think it was really okay for me to blink on the Death Prophet. Mostly I got lucky because I, I hit her twice as I initiated the fight. I think that was from a tower or a creep or something that hit me. So I actually took out half of her life as the fight started. But I did feel very strong at this point, so... Just considering initiating here. He very wisely used his Diffusal Blade, I got Silence, and then I got blown up really fast. And this is one of the hard lessons about playing this hero, was when I realized just how weak my hero was at certain situations. I gave the, uh, I gave the PL about 1,000 gold there, 8, 850 gold from the, the streak, by the way, so that was a pretty big mistake. But anyways, um... Man, that wall was garbage. I decided to buy back here. I was really lucky the, the Venno hit. The ward hit didn't get me. So I ended up getting 300 gold from that. I lost a total of 600 from the buyback. Um, I don't know if that was worth it. It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. For a support, maybe not worth it. It does give me a level and all, and it does give me a bonus, what, 18 damage or something like that? I'm not sure if that was worth the buyback, though. It's hard to say. I shouldn't have died in the first place. But yeah, PL is actually really scary. He had he he did it very wisely. He killed me wisely. He threw the slow on me. I was stupid and used my uh, debuff to remove the the slow, and then uh, he just used his defusal blade to purge me afterwards. And then I was really slow, and it removed my buff because my buff is uh, very similar. It's a removable. And uh, then I just pretty much died because then he does a lot of physical damage, and I actually have very low armor. So the desolator could do nothing to save me there. Um, one item build that uh, I see a lot of people doing when they play Legion Commanders, they get Lifesteal. And I really don't think this is needed at all. Um, it's kind of like similar to Lifestealer, right? Lifestealer already has Lifesteal, why do you need to buy more on him? And Legion is the same thing. It's not reliable, of course, but if it does proc, it's really good Lifesteal. If you spend money on more Lifesteal items, then sure, your, your regular right clicks are going to Lifesteal, but that's not really going to save you as much as um, some other things could, like... I don't know. You could grab a plate nail or something, and then you would take a lot more damage, and then you could reflect things. I had called for the pot of multi here because I wanted to cross the river and initiate, but unfortunately, it didn't really. Dyer's top ten. I is, is this their ward? I'm not quite sure. It doesn't quite appear to be their ward. Peel's pushing the top lane in the meantime. We actually ran right into the death prophet. This is a really good duel for me because I'm able to kill a core hero. found the real PL there, and I really wanted to finish him off. Unfortunately for me, he was able to run away. So that really sucked. I desperately wanted to kill the PL there in that fight, because my right-click damage is really solid. Didn't work out, though. And then we had the gem over there. It was a pretty good fight. We got four for two, it looks like, but definitely could have been a bit better. So... Still have the gem at least. I got bonus damage. I was able to kill a core hero right at the start of the fight. Death Prophet is definitely the best person for me to initiate on uh, in that case. And I think... Oh, I, this is so frustrating. So in the last fight... In the last fight, the Tuskar was like, Guys, why don't you just go for the tower? And then he pushed up like that by himself. And he didn't kill the tower. He ran away. And it got denied. That was frustrating. That's actually a lot of gold. God, Peel is so far ahead of us right now. That's what happens when you don't kill somebody a lot. He just gets farmed. Also, I bought back earlier, so that killed my net worth a bit. But we're actually quite a ways ahead of them. I don't know if we're ahead in the overall gold. We can check. We're actually quite even. We were before, and uh, this is probably Radiant's where I bought back. Tower is under attack. Yeah, this is where I bought back, I believe. And then I killed the Venomancer. So this fight was a big loss for us. We still have a big EXP advantage, at least, but it only does so much. So, I'm trying to finish my BKB so that I don't have to worry about magic damage anymore. Um, it was definitely a mistake this game getting a Black King Bar, though. Because, again, look at their heroes. The major sources of damage they have are PL, Chain Frost, and Venom Ulti. I can pretty much completely avoid Venomancer damage because of my second skill. So, I really just kind of needed to tank up and some other things. Vacuum was actually not that great. I decided to jump on the Lich so that he couldn't ulti. And I was successful. Here's a blade in your eye. I just got absolutely blown up though. That was crazy. And PL just not getting grabbed the Aegis, by the way. Nobody grabbed the Aegis. I didn't realize it was in there, but it was in there. Oh, I remember this part. <laughs> he ended up dying. 
The gem's still sitting there. I'm not sure who grabs the gem, but somebody grabbed it, I think. So that was a really good fight for them. Didn't turn out so hot for us. I should have gone in for the Aegis. I didn't check to see if the Aegis was grabbed. I just assumed it would be because they killed it. They killed Rashawn. So I was like, all right, they killed Rashawn. Obviously, they're going to grab the Aegis, but they, I don't think they did. So um, I did get to duel a core, an, an important hero. It wasn't necessarily similar to, um, you know, oh, they, they put the they put the gem on the career. I think it wasn't like I killed Death Prophet or PL, but at least I got. At least I got the Lich before he Chain Frosted. That could have made a big difference in the fight. Fight didn't go super hot. Uh, the Vacuum could have been a bit better. He like vacuumed them to a spot that wasn't on top of the wall, so he didn't get illusions on everybody. But it was still kind of okay. It's just it's, it's very hard for us to find the PL and to initiate on him, and that's really what we needed to do. I need to like blink and initiate and kill the PL right at the start of the fight. And uh, we didn't really have that option, unfortunately. So I'm about up here. Just looking at the stats of everything. Our stats are actually pretty good, but I think our teamwork thus far has just not been super good. Is the, uh, is the main issue. He should have dropped the Frozen Sigil there at least, um, but... Yeah, he killed the Venomancer again. He threw away his life against... Uh, he killed the Sport here, which is good, but uh, the PL ends up doing some scary things. So I'm going to go initiate here. bottom tower is under attack. I really wanted to duel, but I knew that guy wasn't the real one. And then we did actually find the real one. I maybe should have BKB'd, but I did not. Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. If you're wondering what the BKB would have done, if you're magic immune, then his diffuse blade doesn't end up um, draining your mana, and he has a diffuse blade level one actually. So, uh, I did take bonus physical damage because of that. If I would have had magic immunity, I would have taken less, but it still wasn't too bad for me. I was able to get dual damage despite um, him having an Aegis. So we killed him. We broke the Aegis. Not horrible, not a horrible horrible uh, situation to be in, and I end up disconnecting again, but I'll reconnect very quickly after this. So, let's see what he wrote. He wrote RC. Rage quit, is what he wrote. Damn, you really think I rage quit? How about that, Earth Spirit? See that reconnect? Rage quit. Ugh. Damn. The Legion is grateful. The Legion is grateful. Okay, so we're mid-game. I'm level frickin' 19, I only have 7 armor. This is the problem. I really should have grabbed an armor item instead of a Black King bar. And the exact item that I think I should be grabbing on Legion Commander is an AC. Um, there aren't a whole lot of different armor items. Another actually good item would be Armlet. Um, I haven't tried grabbing an Armlet yet, but it's actually a very good item for Legion Commander. Because, number one, it does 65 damage for a Strength Hero for only 2700 gold. That's very cost efficient. I also have a way to life steal, so it's pretty easy for me to heal back up after I use uh, Armlet Detriment. And it also gives you 5 armor, which is something the hero really needs. So maybe if I would've got an Armlet this game, I, I could've really improved things. It's hard to say though. Uh, Black King Bar I think was a, is a waste. The best use for Black King Bar is getting out of silence, I think, or avoiding chain frost damage, but those are things that I can do with my play. So, getting a BKB this game, I think, was a waste. Uh, the other reason I grabbed it is because I was like, oh, I'm going to have to fight a PL late game because my team isn't really carrying, so I'm going to have to worry about all of this um, all of this mana drain and uh, bonus damage from Diffuser Blade, so it's like, okay, i got to get a BKB. So I think I shouldn't have gotten a BKB. Another item that I think I could have gotten instead of a BKB is actually a Halberd. A Halberd wouldn't have been amazing, but it would have been kind of good. The evasion, at least, would have been nice, because then when people attack me, it gives me a chance to return fire. But there's also a chance it just won't do damage. And especially against appeal, that's really good. I don't know if that prevents him from spawning illusions, but I know uh, it could prevent a lot of damage. So, 25% damage, I dare say. Figured that one was an illusion. I confirmed it here. They're kind of reproducing fast. And this is kind of the moment where I realize that I'm in some deep shit. Because those illusions were getting out of control really fast, and my damage output is not quite high enough for things to really matter. Yes. So it's actually pretty pretty terrifying at this point, and that was when I started realizing that I made an item build mistake. I decided to duel this guy. The reason I, if you're wondering why I dueled him, why I jumped on him so fast, is because I saw those other heroes were in the jungle, dewarding. So I knew the rest of their team was way over there, so I knew I could blink on him and get a kill. So I get another bonus 18 damage, which is really nice. Cooldown will be up in 35 seconds anyway. So, so yeah, this is basically when I realized that my item build was not correct. So the things I needed to do differently. Um, I thought about this after I played this game. What would have made this thing? Uh, what would have made my build a lot easier against PL? And I thought about it this way. I said no desolator was number one. I was like, if I if I go desolator against a PL, 
it doesn't let me ever really get ahead of the PL. It doesn't ever give me like a big advantage against the PL. I didn't go for this gank, by the way, because I didn't have my dual ulti, and uh, I knew he had just a shadow blade. So, um, but the Desolator doesn't really let me get that ahead of the PL. It doesn't give me survivability against the PL. It doesn't give me AOE, and it also doesn't really scale that hard. Uh, and it doesn't help me against the illusions very much. Like a Desolator, what I really needed to get instead was a Battle Fury, I think. Battle Fury is about the same price, it's a little more expensive, like 300 gold. It gives you the same amount of damage, but it doesn't give you the minus armor. So you will lose out on a lot of single target damage, but being able to cleave is going to help you farm faster, it's going to help me uh, kill jungle creeps, it's also going to help me kill the PL illusions. And since Legion Commander gets all this bonus damage from her ulti, it actually stacks amazingly well with a Battle Fury, because every bit of damage I get is going to be attributed to the cleave. So this plus 166 that I'm sitting on right now just from snowballing and killing enemy heroes and stuff, like, all of that is getting cleaved. 35% of that gets cleaved, which is like 35... It's like 50 damage or something like that. So 50 extra pure damage is going to get cleaved across my enemies. So it's actually... It's, I think I should have gone Battle Fury. If I would have gone Battle Fury and skipped the BKB instead of BKB, grabbed an AC, I would have had tons of survivability. I would have had almost equivalent minus armor. I would have had really good attack speed. And I would have had about the same damage. Um, I... And I didn't really need to get magic immunity in this game. I think I, I took the heroes that I'm up against for granted, namely Venomancer and Lich. Venomancer and Lich are not good heroes against Legion Commander, I would say, because I can uh, remove their debuffs and their slows, and they're not stuns. If they're stuns and I'm dueling somebody, I'm not right-clicking, and that's bad. But if, if they're just slows, it's not that big of a deal. I can still DPS. So um, I really think I should have gone Battle Fury into AC here. Now, um, this is kind of a like a freak incident. I think if you're not against a PL, if you're against a normal hero, Going Desolator is fine. If it's just, like, one hero to deal with, like, even an anti-mage, whatever, you could probably get away with the Desolator, because it's really going to help you kill that that main hero. But against um, a PL, I think you really do have to adjust your item builds on a lot of heroes, and this is one of the games where I think that it's important. So, in most cases, I think grabbing Deso is definitely the way to go, but not this time. I think this time a Battle Fury would have been correct. So, I'm just going to go jungle for a bit. Um, their team is actually hanging out in the area. Peel's actually standing right next to me, which is not good. I waited way too long to BKB here. And I actually, uh, I did duel the, the uh, DP, but she ended up winning. I probably shouldn't have dueled there. It was basically, we just got screwed. Like, there were two invisible heroes right next to me as they started. I needed to react faster and basically decide to use BKB. The reason I didn't, because I was like, oh, I'm ganked. Well, I'm screwed, you know? But then I was like, eh, maybe I can BKB this. So I BKB'd it, and then I tried to fight it, and then I dueled somebody, and I shouldn't have. I probably should have just right-clicked her, and I think I also forgot to use Overwhelming Odds. I don't think I used that. If we look at items, PL has a Manta, I think. Yes, he does. So that's where, th where things get really scary. Because as he initiates, he's going to press Manta, and then there's going to be, like, a ton of illusions hitting on me. And if I use Duel against the... Uh, the Death Prophet, then I can't even use Overwhelming Odds and clear out all the illusions. So, the most important thing you can do against a PL is stop his huge buildup of uh, illusions. That's by far the most important thing you can do. They're saying, oh, he's dead. I was actually planning on buying back, so... Got a little bit of an analyzation of the situation. I think this duel was a mistake. Really didn't need to use it to get that kill. Um, he was going to die most likely anyways, and now I can't use it on another hero. I do get the bonus damage, but I think I needed to use the disable on an important hero like PL or Death Prophet or something. Now I basically don't have a way to deal with those heroes. I'm just going to remove his silence here, so that he can vacuum. Tornado was a little unfortunate. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. I was really hoping I could deal with the PL there, but I wasn't able to. I didn't really proc that much, and he's a lot more farm than me, anyways. So. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I think I did have a plate mail at this point. Yeah, I did. I picked up a plate mail for that fight. Still didn't work out, though. Wasn't able to kill him. If I had a Battle Fury and an AC, I think there's a good chance that I could have done a lot better. But the main issue is that, simply put, PL has way too much farm. He hasn't died this game. He's 6-0 and 11. So he's continuously ramping up, and I've, I've lost a couple... Uh, I've that was my second buyback, so I'm like... 
what, 2.5 gold, 2.5k gold in the in, uh, in the can, and uh, I'm just a lot farther behind, yeah. And he's he's got twice the value of me. He has two times as much gold as I do, so, like, me out carrying that guy is just simply not going to happen. I would have to have a perfect game, and we'd have to gank that guy a lot, and it never really happened. Why isn't he right getting... What? Oh my god, that Mirana. Why didn't he just right-click the Death Prophet? Death Prophet was dead. That was the silliest thing ever. By the way, our Mirana, if you guys didn't notice, she built a Lincoln Sphere. Look at what Lincoln's blocks this game. It blocks Frost Nova. The Radiant now has it maybe blocks the initial cast of Chain Frost. It blocks Phantom Lance. And that's it. Maybe the Yules from Death Prophet. It blocks, like, the weakest crap ever, with the exception of Chain Frost. If it does actually block Chain Frost, that's great. But if anything else gets blocked by Lincoln's horrible item to pick up, it's a 5,000 gold item, and she's playing, like, Support Mirana. It doesn't do anything. That was a bad choice. That was a really bad choice. I was very frustrated. This is the part where my allies just started fighting, because apparently the the uh, Invoker had played against the Mirana and the Tuscar in other games. He was like, yeah, they just suck. Like, they're going to lose you all the games. And then I looked at the scoreboard, and I was like... What are you talking about, dude? Like, the scoreboard is actually... I don't know if I can bring it up here, but... The scoreboard is actually okay for us. Our team is looking okay in stats. The problem is that they didn't buy any wards, they didn't buy courier, and we didn't really play as a team either. We lost the mid tower at 7 minutes. When bot tower was pushed, there wasn't very much defense on that. And, like, it just... There was not enough teamwork, I think. And also that big fight in the mid here, when I was counter-pushing top... That was pretty silly by my team as well, so we also lost the Roshan fight, partially my fault, obviously I made a lot of mistakes as well, but I think the biggest issue that our team had, that we made for mistakes, was like, just communication. We're actually heading kills, but we're losing, and we got mega creeped, because PL never really got ganked either, nobody ganked him. It was a Dark Seer versus a PL, and once PL gets a defuse, a defuse the blade at 13 minutes, there's nothing that Dark Seer can do to stay alive, basically. Alright, I immediately removed the Venal ulti. I just wanted to kill all of the, uh, the creep wave if possible. I'm gonna jump on one of these guys. I BKB'd and dueled. I'm able to kill the Lich. So I get some bonus damage. I was hoping that guy would come fight more. Could tell that was the real one, so I just right clicked him. I was gonna do it guys, did you see that? It's so cool. It looked like there was no way that I was gonna survive there and I almost survived. It was sweet. Um, anyways, that's Legion Commander. I didn't win, but I think it was a pretty good introductory game. I showed you guys the basics of the hero. You get a blink dagger, you gank with your ulti, you snowball damage, and then you have to make smart item choices. And I'm not quite sure, I don't think I did this game for sure, but in most cases I think I, unless they have heavy stunners, I think I need to skip the BKB and I need to go for like Battle Fury AC or armlet AC. Something like that is a lot cheaper and we get my items up faster. I think largely my team kind of dropped the ball here. We didn't really have a hard carry. What Our Tusk had 344 GPM. Like, neither of those guys had a whole bunch of farm. So, maybe if we actually had a hard carry other than myself, not that I was a hard carry, it would have been a lot better. But but that's Legion Commander. Um, I think that's the best jungling skill build. If you're Lanian, it's a bit different. Go like 411 or something like that. But I think you should always max out your first skill first. I promise. Just because it helps you contribute more in team fights, it's a nuke, and nukes are always better in the early game than late. So, max out that skill, uh, contribute to your fights, uh, gank when you get duel up, and try to make stuff happen, snowball from kills, and try to be a semi-carry in the mid-game. Daedalus is great, Monkey King Bar is probably really good as well, uh, Daedalus is solid, I already said that. Daedalus, Monkey King Bar, Desolator, AC, Black King Bar, things like that. Um, maybe a Basher as well. Basher wouldn't be too bad in the late, late game, but generally I'd go for Utility first. I would recommend that. So that's Legion Commander. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, sorry for the delay in this video, of course. Um, I am uh, visiting my parents in Wisconsin right now, so all the videos are going to have shit audio for about a week. I come back on the 30th, and then I should be back up to, back up to speed and everything. So thanks, guys, for watching, and I will see you later. Bye. Hello, this is my ex, but okay, bye.